I need a Land Raider, but the Spartan looks better. I don't think I need to explain that any further. The armoured section that covers the top of the tracks is the biggest visual difference between the Spartan and the contemporary Land Raider. Well, contemporary to the 41st millennium. The first job was to build the majority of the hull and the chassis as Games Workshop intended, and that meant following the instructions, which honestly I didn't really like very much. But it did leave me with enough of the model assembled to take measurements and then build a quick mock-up for the new track guard sections. The top of the Spartan chassis is a very complex shape, and uh, <laughs> of course it's not symmetrical. Why would it be? So this did take some trial and error, mostly error. But now that's done, if you want to have a go yourself, I've put a link for some templates down in the video description. The track guards are cut from 1mm styrene sheet. I didn't want to go any thicker because the complex shape would be a nightmare to cut with hand tools on sheet material with more uh, presence. Without wanting to sound like my dad, it's incredibly important to keep these as square and true as possible. So I made judicious use of the 1, 2, 3 blocks, magnets and my engineer's square. And they fit. Now there were a few tiny little gaps and I could have spent some time refining the shape further to create an almost perfect fit, but I was so concerned about keeping the whole assembly square. It forms a big chunk of the model's silhouette, so any sort of wonkiness would be obvious from a mile off. Before gluing the track guards to the model, I needed to make sure there was enough clearance for the tracks themselves, and because I'm lazy, and I like to paint the tracks separate from the rest of the model, that meant some minor surgery was needed to the track parts that would need to slot into the new track guard sections. Once I was happy, with, with the fit rather than, you know, in general, I glued the track guards in place and moved on to the fun task of filling and sanding. Now, I want to use this tank as a Land Raider in Warhammer 40,000, and in my head canon, this is an older Spartan that's been dragged out of storage and fitted out more like a 41st millennium Land Raider. And for me, that means applique armor plates made from more styrene, and a mixture of fixtures and fittings from both the Heresy era and the far future. Oh, of course, some rivets. You can't have grimdark without rivets. Sticking with the modernised Spartan theme, I wanted to reuse the sponsons that came with the kit instead of replacing them with the Land Raider sponsons, which I think would look a bit clumsy with the proportions of the Spartan chassis. Thankfully, the design of LAS cannons really doesn't seem to have changed that much over the millennia. This meant I could keep all of the weapon articulation points from the Spartan's LAS cannon array by simply cutting the outer pair of LAS cannons to scavenge its mounting hardware. As luck would have it, this also proved a handy mounting point for Sponson's armour plates, which are based vaguely on those found on the Land Raider Crusader. Speaking of which, I spent ages second-guessing myself about the design of these. Trying to come up with something that evokes the character of the 40k Land Raider while complementing the proportions of the Spartan was incredibly difficult. It's harder than you think, so hats off to the Games Workshop design team. They're alright that lot. Mostly. Why did somebody stop this? I was uh, I was going for 80s Springsteen there and ended up with an 80s action figure advert. Maybe that's more appropriate. Anyway, here's more of it. The Spartan Heavy Bolter turret is a bit old school, and the Land Raider version would be comically oversized on this model, so I decided to build my own, starting with the bottom of the turret basket from the Spartan kit and utilising a pair of Cadian Heavy Weapon Team Heavy Bolters. These required some of the details removing on the inside faces in order to make more space for a nice, simple central mount, which I constructed from more 1mm styrene. This was complemented by a pair of styrene mounting rails and a light sprinkling of hemispherical nail art beads. The armour design for all of the twin link weapons on Space Marine vehicles during this period is pretty iconic, so I wanted to at least ape some of that here though it did need to be scaled down to fit the less chunky appearance of the new Cadian Heavy Bolters and the more subtle design of the Spartan. And I think it turned out pretty good. Understated, but good. The multi-melter I planned to use was a, was a bit big for the pencil mount supplied with the Spartan kit, so I needed to extend the front of the cupola to build my own. As an aside, the best way I've found to drill accurate holes in styrene or other plastic models is to locate the position with a centre punch, start with a small drill bit, and then work your way up through various sizes of bits. And if you're working on particularly small pieces, these can be done by hand to avoid any chance of the part splitting. The weapon mount was cut from some 4mm styrene tube, reinforced with some plastic scraps, and of course, some nail art beads for rivets, while the multimeter itself was a spare part from the ATV kit. 
It's absolutely perfect for the job because it's got a built-in pencil mount and a pretty rad looking gun shield. And with the armaments complete, all that leaves is uh, this messy business. So, uh, usual disclaimer, this isn't a painting channel, so I'm just going to give you the broad... Uh, str no, no, you, you, you can't say that You're better than that. Obviously, I'm using an airbrush here, but I found this works really well with a rattle can. Even the yellow contrast paint goes on really well with a brush if you thin it a little bit. That being said, I found it's best to build up the saturation of the colour with a couple of coats, whether you're using an airbrush or a fuzzy stick. With the Spartan now in its uh, minion flage, the next task was to paint all of the black bits, and boy, yeah, there are a lot of black bits to paint. There are so many wheels. I've said it before, but I think Vallejo Model Air Gunmetal is the best paint ever made, and I'd kill your nan just to get a little bit more. I don't know what it is, but I've always seemed to take a bit of a funny turn as soon as I get to the painting section. Anyway, the next job was some panel lining with a black oil wash. I prefer oils for these because you can clean them off with white spirit if the paint doesn't go where you want it to. They're all cuddly and forgiving, unlike acrylic paints which just sit there taunting you for your poor brush control. Speaking of brush control, I needed none of that at all for the next stage. Sponge chipping with Vallejo Neutral Grey. Remember when I said I like to paint tracks separately? This is why. It's just... Oh God, it's just so much easier. With the tracks in place, all that was left to do was a little bit of highlighting and shading on the paint chips, followed by some light weathering with the airbrush with a pretty random mixture of dark grey and brown paints. As has become tradition, I forgot that I really should apply the transfers before doing the weathering, but I kind of got away with it this time. And that, as they say, is a tank. When I started this project, I had three goals. I wanted it to read as a land raider on the table, I wanted its origins as a Spartan to be obvious, and I wanted it to look like it belonged in the 41st millennium. And it's not really up to me to decide how well I've achieved those three things, but I'm pretty happy. What I can say for sure is that the Spartan kit is much more detailed and arguably better proportioned than the venerable 40k Land Raider, and I think it makes a pretty good basis for one. Right, that's enough tank talk. Next time I'm going to do some trees, but not like regular trees, special trees. Alright, I mean that's the video title right there. See you next time.